We are Fit Like Folk. My name is Fiona Jane Brown and I'm currently the Secretary of the Scots Leet Associate, but I also hear my own business running walking tours in Aberdeen, Cut Hidden Aberdeen Tours. I'm also after interested in local history and that's what's led me to actually use Scots and presenting some of the stories in my tours. And I decided to get in better by hearing folk actually dramatise as well, rather uh, suspicious characters that you meet in Everdeen's history. Now, some of the favourite things that I have seen are about true crime. And the most interesting things are the Alistines. And the next, you're going to see stories out of the sketches that I have written. And you'll notice that uh, the characters speak in Doric, my dialect at Aberdeenshire, certainly Scots that uh, I'm a actors feel that they can understand because I just grieve it as I speak it. So, enjoy. Aberdeen's record and executioners is pretty well documented. For Robbie Welsh, who was the last of the executioners that hang it folk up on the gallows hill. Now, that's beside for Pataudry is new. If you're familiar with Aberdeen, you'll ken that uh, the Trinity Kirkyard has its gate at Errol Street. Now, the wee hilly next to that, of course, was kent as the Miser's Hilly, because that's what Dawn's fans used to stand atop to look into the gron before they built the flats and you knew kind of see in. That was our gallows site. But afore that, for about, well, maybe for the earliest times when Aberdeen was fun at, the hanging site was actually at the heed of the gallow gate, which is how it gets its name, same way in Glasgow, the road to the gallows. But it was moved around 1500 to the site there. Now, it's near there that Johnny Milne actually carried out his last execution. It was actually in front of the toll booth in the castle gate in Aberdeen. Toll booth still stands to this day. It's got the modern frontage on it, but the building ahead it is the 1615 toll booth and there's a museum there new but in front of that in 1810 or Johnny Milne he carried out his first execution but as you'll find out it was almost his last Aberdeen oh. ye mon respect mon to the way <laughs> I'm the civic executioner. Ah. And I carry out my solemn duties with the dignity that comes with a civic profession. That's nae that I heard the day you hanged Andrew Gossack. You weren't exactly treated with respect that day, were you? Oh, no, I wasn't. I got mere respect for Hossack himself. He even called me, sir. Called <laughs> you, sir? Aye, he did. <laughs> Aye, but Sir Milne was not so bright he managed to escape the law. Tell him how you got caught in the first place. Hey, 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 shh. Must a man's past sins be, be, be cast up against him like that? And by such a, a, a contumacious besom like yourself. He was caught robbing a farm at course of beehives. Come on, Johnny. Did you never find something easier to steal? Me stain for the angry, don't they? Aye, the bloody div. <laughs> Nay, half. But you can. Honey's money. Oh, aye, so it is. And can I damn farmer? He never give me nut, so I just helped myself. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Only why? No, I didn't get any respect that day. Nathan, you rabble. I am the tomb's executioner after that. Hmm. Only because nobody else would do it. The last executioner, Jock Milne, had lain in his grave for a year before the council found somebody daft enough to agree to take it on. And that was you, Johnny Milne of Tully Skookies. What's the matter? Did you know like the idea of going to the colonies? I'll tell you know that the job of the civic executioner is a very, very important one. No, 
In the winter king to Australia. I'm so feared I'd never come back alive. That's more than bees sting you out air you can. Oh, aye, aye. <laughs> Only why. Back to my story. Now, that Hozak, well, he went to his death like a soldier. He was silent as the grave he was. <laughs> and as I watched him doing the Tyburn jig, oh, that's when you have your legs jerk about <laughs> and you're getting throttled at the end of the rope. <laughs> I spied some of the field gipes over there trying to steal my cart. Real Marquine and Chrissy, she tried to stop him. But the very magistrates themselves, they pulled her away, leaving their field nerfs alone. And they, your esteemed citizens, you can't think you did. You went and unhitched my pony, and the pure beastie ran away into the crowd. Ah, oh, dearie me. So what did you, as a civic official, do then? I was furious. I tilt him. Ye man, repent of the indignities that you have offered up to me and my daughter. They just laughed, and then they shouted out to me. We can you, Johnny Malm. You're nothing but a wee crook yourself. <laughs> now, I want to take that corpse up to the anatomists. Well, I resigned on the spot. Disrespect. Aye, and the magistrates and burgesses spent the rest of the afternoon flying you with fine wine to get you to take the job back. So tell me, why was it that cut down Hossack's corpse after you stormed back in the hut? Well, I, b I believe it was the scaffies in the end, and that was quite fitting, really, if Hossack had in fact murdered the farmer and his doctor. Carted up up that broad hill over there for a shallow burial in the back of a cart, stinking a dung. <laughs> but that was not the end of the story, was it? It happened when you went to check whether the scaffies had done their job. The body had been stolen. Aye, by the noddies. Oh, that's the medical student she can. <laughs> so, Hosack ended up on the anatomist's table after all. I want to behave. You see, the Privy Council said long ago that only one corpse a year was sticking up to Marshall College, and Hosack had been hung as a thief, nay, a murderer. Aye, see, if I had my way, I'd had those thieving body snatchers, and I'd, I'd flay their backs raw with my birch over there at the Whippenstein at the foot of the Broadgate. Nay, respect for the law. Now, you've been warned. And then I want to feel the nip my birch now. Oh no, you didn't. So, show some respect to your civic executioner. <laughs> King's College, Aberdeen. Phonet in 1495 by Bishop William Elphinstone was granted a chair of medicine in 1498 by James IV, the first ever in any Scottish varsity, and the king was a grand friend of the bishop. Marshall College, which was king's great Protestant enemy, was founded nearly a century later by James's descendant, James VI, but it did not get a medical faculty or 1700. To train loons to be surgeons, they not bodies to dissect, but they got for the hanging tree or for the poor's houses. However, that was not that muckle Aldeans that folk get hinged for in Scotland in the 18th century. Only 20 folk were hinged in Aberdeen between 1800 and 1854. Saying the medical students were driven to bringe about the graveyards in the murk and hawk up the bodies of the newly dead. Sign a wee laugh surgeon or student to the cellar. They could get professional grave robbers, cried resurrectionists, to do the howking on their behalf. Folk feared for their deed, and some feared that they might be buried alive. Sign the deed were not a for these nyafs were expecting, as happened twa three hundred years ago in Aberdeenshire. Picture the scene. In the Ruri graveyard, in the deed ceilings of the nicht. 
twa with be grave robbers, he creep it up to the grave o' in Mary Elphinstone, the floor o' the geary, for had only been married a month when she deet. Her man, James Elphinstone, was the sorriest loon in the hale parish. Sign he laid her to rest in her wadding goon, and we her wadding and engagement rings on her finger. And that engagement ring had a solid, solitaire diamond. Sign these brigands kent they were going to mark Bonnie's siller on the body of a young demiki like her. What did you say about the scene again, Jock? The barn was rich, a laird in Kentor, made money off the canal for Inverurie to Aberdeen. She's still got a stoat or a diamond on her finger. <laughs> Perks to the job, Jock! Perks to the job! <laughs> Finders, keepers! Losers, keepers! Well, help me then, they're standing like a dumpling. Alright, they need to be some dusty about it. Ah, look, there's the mark off. Oh, after we get her eat. Look, look, bring the lantern here. Oh, nifty, nifty, me. Now, isn't it that a bony jig? Oh, 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 oh. It's fine. Here, hold the lantern till I get it off a finger. No, you hold the lantern. Uh, I'll get the ring. Here, Faz, I've seen your partner here. Me? How about other than thee? Oh, very well. You get the ring. Go on, then. All right. What the hell are you doing? It will not come off. I need some butter or something to make it slippy. Butter? Are you wise? Where are we going to get butter in the middle of a graveyard? Here, hold the lantern. I'll sort it. Uh, what are you going to do? Got her finger out. You can't do that. Oh, no. She's dead. She's not going to care about it. You really are a puck with eggs and pizza. Hold the lantern or I see the cut. I wouldn't want to damage the ring. Where am I? So dark. So cold. James! James! Where are you? So, you're near Gloucester. What happened to me? I felt so sick. Then I wanted to sleep. Why is... Why am I in my wedding gown? And who are you? Uh, nobody. Just a humble grave digger. And fit where you lay in a coffin if you need deed. Oh no! Where am I? In Brewery Kirkyard? Some field doctor thought you were dead? M my finger! I'm bleeding! You! You're one of those grave robbers! Were you going to tell me to the surgeons? For shame! No! Oh, we thought you were dead! I'm just a beer quarter. What's a man supposed to do? Surgeons pay good money for bodies, especially those young quines a day before their time. You scoundrel! You wanted my ring! I shall report you to the Sheriff of Aberdeen. He is known to my husband, James Eccleston of Logie. Ah, well, actually, it's your own husband's maid servant that should be in prison for telling us. She told us you were going to be buried with the diamond ring. Our own servant? What's her name? Janet! Janet Peary! Her uncle's a sacrist at Marshall College. It was he that was going to take you to body for us. Well, she'll no bide a moment longer. And if you want to avoid imprisonment, you shall get me home. Okay, I'm sorry, ma'am, if, if I offended you. So there you have it, friends. Twice buried Mary and Johnny Milne, Everdeen's worst executioner. So thank you for watching and hope to see you sometime on Enema Tours. Hidden Aberdeen Tours. Just look it up online. Thank you and good night. The Scots language, the mother tongue, is a great medium for translation. Starting with Gavin Douglas. In the 16th century, translating Virgil's Aeneid, we have a whole host of excellent poems from other languages, from a whole range of languages, 
from classical Latin and Greek and Old Irish right up to the present day, and from just about every language under the sun, you have excellent translations into Scots. So here's a few just for a sampling. In the 13th century in Italy, there was a very colourful character called Cecco Angelieri, who was seemingly a thoroughgoing young scallywag, because this is what he says of himself. There are just three things in life that make me fain. Three things of which I'll never get in you. It's lasses, house and dice. And they, my lane, can set my licks and hurt to reel and duke. But seen'll can I gang and hae a rant, for Tim and licks my purse. A whiles mon lee says nane so kent and lichtly all a lant. We feint the sinner, feint the ploys for me. And sign I say, deal program we a lance, my mully feather, sin he keeps me yop, and say a laugh a bid crow hame for France. I sin you'd wide a while a boodle for his grup, though it were you when cadgers get their chance, I see an eagle dung doon by a whop. And Cecco Angelieri and his father seem to have been on the very worst of terms, whether his dad was really as mean as Cecco makes out, or whether he just couldn't be bothered with his wayward son's behaviour. But this is another sonnet that Cecco wrote about his old man. The bitter bleak ill will I bear for feather, wi muckle reason tae I'd hae ye true. Well, gar him leave as lang's the vegan Jew as fine I can, Methuselah gin ye drether. O oh, nater, what a rang ye've done me here! The other day I speared them for some brandy. They're quartz o' it in his och, the ticked old randy. I'm telling ye, he slachted me guy near. Suppose I'd speared for rare Chateau Lafitte, I tazelt, just to gi' him another fike. He spot right in my face. We'll thought to do it. And still, folk says I shouldn't hate the tyke. Look to his spite. You'll say whene'er you see it, just scrunch him up alive as soon as you like. Well, a lack of cash was something which seems to have troubled Jack Angelieri all his life. This is one of his poems lamenting his poverty. Do you think I'm sharp it? See, the licht of day comes glinting through my purse, you know my book. We cravers biz and ruin to pook and rook, I canna hoard as muckle as a stray. I've tint with ear a head of graith and gear, little I hate to pie and less to hain. The scale for scabbit grun that's still my ain, max, when I'm lucky, two or three plaques the year. But all it needs is just a bonny hoor, and gonna had as muckle gowd as meal, I'd fling it o' a wa and half an hour. You think I dinna ken I'm just a feel, but I the mere I win wi pine and stoor, the mere I need to sparple like the deal. And as to bonny hoors, part of his life he seems to have spent chasing a lady called Bikina. And this is what he says of his unfortunate love. Of the kina. Gin ony day I dinna see my dearie, O oh, nicht a walt and wammel like an eel, And och, what hersier stangs and stoons I feel, While birlin mang my bed clays like a peary. And through the hunner thousand oors a nicht, I say, Please God, when will the door come teetin? And all my face is sipin' what we greetin'. But Nathan says my pine, nor makes it licht. And ken ye what she gives me for my fairin? When e'er a trapes to toon, the jod to see, I bide our line, she says, and she's no carin' gin I should win back hame as since can be. She's browdin' on some other prinket bairn, and likes him mair a thousand times nor me. And he got his revenge on Bekina by writing this poem about her. When first my bird comes crowling out her scratcher, afore she's placed her door mat with paint, the bugs of my svizog ye ever kent would look like Marilyn when it tried to match her. The own face is like the worst scalp erse ye've seen without the putty paint and polyfiller. 
you'd think you'd met some weird affair thriller or something fleeing ruin on Halloween. But Crivens, does she no ken all the tricks we warpent? Gin you saw the way she plays it, you'd just fall for her like a ton of bricks. And thon's her ploy to get me fair bumbaze it. I wanna look at only other chicks, just her. I'm gawkit, and it's me that says it. And Checo got his come up as two once. He ventured to write a cheeky poem to Dante, no less. And another poet, not much is known about him, called Guelfo Taviani, wrote Checo a poetic reprimand that went like this. Checo, my lad, I doot you're in a dwam. I bringing in and never tack intent. Your gallus is a stagy on the bent, or some young brodick cout that runs ram stam. Do you think you'd play the brun ball to his white, kemping wi Dante in a verbal spiel, wi all his bra philosophy and skill? You're no a hero, laddie, just a skite. Philosophers tack little tent o' gear, they ken it's bruckle, and reptans eye to strip their wit and engine bricked wi leer, and Dante's wise. Lang sign he kent the way. Say, mine, my laddie, why you meant to steer. While out's the heekest, gangs the nest a glide. Well, coming from Italy to France and jumping forward a few centuries, the French poet La Fontaine is known, like our Scots poet Robert Henderson, for putting Aesop's fables into verse. Here's one of La Fontaine's fables. The Gus Lauper and the Emuk. The hail summer lang, the Gus Lauper sang, but the winter ones blaff, fun him guy in a laugh, deal a midgin or moch on the heather or hoch. To the Emuk, ye mornin, his fear, he gaed sornin, and pricked him for mate, just a peery wee hate to sustain him till four. What ye gee, I'll restore. Ilk a bodle and plaque by the hair still hay back. On my hecht, I'll repay, and we enter his day. Nay, Leonard, this crater, a fought in his nater. To the sonner he says, Who passed you the days when the sun sheen was bricked? Well, a sang day and nicht, can ye please, to folks cheer. That I'm right glad to hear. Did ye sing a broad chance? We'll awanu and dance. And another of La Fontaine's, the Corby and the Lowry. Sir Corby, up a tree was sitting, a gusty kebuck in his nib. Sir Lowry for the young got witten, and hailed him with a sleek at fib. Aye, Mister Corby, help some greeting. My fags, but you're a wheel fort loon. Your feathers blake like siller gleetin, mon be the best in all the tune. Noo, gin your sang were half as bonny as the on braw coat, I win a lee, though this green shaw haunt beelds birdies money, I bin the maw ye dear the gree. The glaiket bird was fair delirate, his loosome vice was all his pride, Rich sin he'd let the lower hear it. His jaggy nib he aimed at wide, and to the grun the kebuck tumult. Sir Lowry hunched it in a glyph. Sir Corby, gunk it and your mummelt, swore nae mair to be made a kiff. Sir Lowry, lad, I read ye fairly, what tends to fleetures I gets cheat. This lesson's worth a kebuck, surely, but for the bird it cam hour late. I'm going now to Germany. A poet called Heinrich Heine, a 19th century poet, goes very well in Scots because, like a lot of Scottish poets, he wrote in verse forms and metres very much influenced by ballads and folk songs. Germany, in fact, just like Scotland, has a great tradition of ballads and folk songs and many German poets wrote in the folk song tradition. Heinrich Heine a lot of his poems were translated expertly into Scots by Alexander Gray. A lot of Czech and Jolieri's poems were translated expertly into Scots by George Campbell Hay, 
whom we'll come to in a few minutes. Well, here's a couple of poems by Heinrich Heine. This one's called Don Lassie Luck. Don Lassie Luck's a lichtsome John. She never bides in ye place lang. She'll straight your hair abin your brew and kiss ye ince and half shall gang. Don wifey wan luck, snow the same. Close to her heart she'll hide ye dear. She's no in haste. Aside your bed she settles doon wi woo and weir. Another ballad like one called A Lassie, uh, sorry, A Laddie Lood A Lassie. A laddie lood a lassie, or lood another mare. The other lood another, and thon twa made a pair. And teen the lassie made it, the first bra chill that comes to vague and doon the cosy, the laddie grat wi gram. Aye, it's an old, old story, but new as this day's daw, and ilk a chill it comes to, it brax his heart in twa. Another one by Heine called In Fremit Ertz. Lang sign I bade in sick a bonny land. The birks o' hame, sae heech they grew, the gowns waft sae loun. It was a dream. It kissed me in the old Scots lead and spak wi vice o' hame. Ye wadna true who kind the soon, alluye. It was a dream. And one that's very well known, a tune, Ich weiß nicht was sonnes bedeuten, the Lorelei. I'll not sing it, but I'll recite a Scots version of it. I ken now what is a bodement, my heart sae sair and pain. I spiel for the days of my bairn heed, I canna fleen for my mind. The lift is colour at gloaming, and quait the braid forth rows. The sun's less leams at the dune gang, still licht the taps of the nows. Up thunder a lassie is sitting, sae loosome, bonny and fair. Her gowd is in gem stained skinkling, she kames her gowd in hair. And gowd is the kame that she kames wi, and ay she sings her sang. The lilt, sae ootlin and eerie, sets brood and herts to mang. The boatman, a flocht in his cobble, it stoons wi' every green. He tents na the rocks and the water, he's gomin heech a bin. I doot the boat and the boatman will sweel doon at less than the swas. And of this I threw wi' a lilton, the kelpie was the cause. Coming now to the other language of our own country, Gaelic, the Scots and the Gaelic literary traditions have been very far apart for a long time, but in the 20th century, from both directions, poets and translators have tried to build bridges. George Campbell Hay wrote in both Scots and Gaelic, and English, and sometimes Italian, and sometimes Norwegian. He was an amazing poet and a polyglot as well. Some of his translations, some of his poems... He wrote in both Scots and Gaelic, a version in Scots and a version in Gaelic. And some of his poems, his Gaelic poems, have been translated into Scots by Douglas Young, and some more of his Gaelic poems I've tried tried to translate. So here's one. George Campbell Hay is very much a poet of the sea and ships, and this poem's called The Vise of the Corrie. Firth we wan on the lake green foons, Link it by garvel, grumly and gousterous, Oot the sue was, come rocks crows loupen, De call swas heeds, her heeds she heist it, Our spirly black lass that rins wi' a reenish, She raised up her sang, and ramstam skeltered. She racks her rates as steve as steel, She racks her sides to the sides of the swas, She racks her rake to the rake of the sea, She dunst a dirt with the bow in her brangling, she clashed her clure with the seam o' her shoother, she hashed a hag with a heed in her howderin. Er ye noe, blithe was her boorin, arvich loomin, bushed the her vauntin, aff and shmarnock lochin she lilted, nocht in urin, but her scalpin smocht her, 
spindrift and fame for the crests of the swaws, knocked the new logs by the soon they were scurling. And another one by George Campbell Hay called The Prince's Army. When the Prince's Army wan till English grand after ford on the river, they turned roon, ilk a man drew his sword for his scabbard, and for a hand a while gone on Scotland in silence. When the army wad the river, stood the English lands beginning, roon they faced, but corn or whishy, gomped in lealty steve and sicker, back on Scotland. Ilk man whisk it out his sword, looked still a glyphic, vood to her, their vir and witness. Swords were sheathed to scabbards scraken, weirmen mirst to pipers skirling. I was mine, a whit cam after, weary staps and bloody beffin, paid the price of on vous keeping, great Goliath they got him stacker, three to yin at less they funert. On her pang, their lives were snedded. Yea, spiel, yin, in this world's granted, for to show her metals forging, for to prove her man heeds honing, for to mence or shame her nation. Now's her time to stop and turn. Gain. Now's her time to stop and turn. Go more land with love and thinness. Gee or vu but fush nor threatening, draw the sword o' oor der spirit, sword o' Scotland. White het lowin, many years a sligget dwamin in its sheath, grown boch and rusty, blake the dwam was. News o'er walkin'. Uri Podcast is a cheery mixter mapster of stories, sayings and nonsense, mostly in the Scots tongue. You'll hear tales of friendly speeders. There's an awfully big speeder living in my shed. We nine muckle in and eight bursy legs. Twe snashy fangs for chowing up fleas and eight bursy pooks on his eight bursy knees. Fricht some witches. I heard she cursed old Jock McCurk for saying her potions didn't work. He knelt on toy bricks wow. left on the flare, yeah. even though he doesn't have wains on him. Oori pirates. Now then, my lad. The voice was harsh, but the face at Camphy was harsher. Ricky was confronted with a fearsome fizzog, cruel grey in. A neb that looked like it might have been punched more than yints, and a moo full of brun and broken teeth, and odious wastrels. There ain't bade in a wee village by a murksome wood, an easy ozy lazy cobbler. Now that's a chap of Max and Men's shoes, if you didn't ken. And to be fair, in his case, you make no ken at all to see him. He was far more like to be curried into a scratcher, or yawning out a mug of cocoa, or scratching his bahuki and gopping into space, than actually macking shoes. There's classic tales alongside the brand new stories. Then it started to spell out the door and into the streets. Folk were wading through it, no share what was going on. The porridge flooded the streets until it came a river. Mary came home to see three dogs, a cuddy, a cat and a tune mare floating down the street on a river of porridge. Fresh for the heads of Susie Briggs and Alan McClure, twa bra friends who never ever fecht or quarrel. Wrap your lugs round the Scottify Challenge, a new original sign based on a favourite Scots word every episode. What is she? Burling up and down the street Staring at the steerer in their feet Won't it just be sweet To rook it, just look it The state of your clies, I bet you're sorry oh, Come on, Dougal, give yourself a shugal Spin away your worries, wait for the centrifugal You've been a bit of glee Bahuki, 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 Bahu
give back, back to me, me. we'll make a drum high, a drum ho, you'll know what me, I'll have you know, the slightest bite with Gary Boke, I'm the foosty cherry at the bottom of the poke, he drum ho, I'd have been a loch thinking, oh, what a holiday, what could be better than this, share my patter in the water, we are splashing, we are splattered, tuck a duke, it's the life for bliss, gaze a P-U-D-D-O-C-K, I'm a puddock, I'm a puddock, we are... We make these podcasts ourselves, just for your entertainment, and we fair hope you all enjoy them. Follow the link or scan the QR code for the hail of Season 1, completely free. Season 2 is on the way, and we've already been nominated for a Scots Language Award, would you believe? We hope you'll join us, folks. It's rare fun for the Hail family. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'm Susie Briggs, one half of our wee podcast, and I'm going to tell you a story called Wished. Wished has uh, recently been awarded a Scots publication grant uh, with Foggy Toddle Books and Will Gorman, the illustrator, and that will should be on the shelves by spring 2022. Um, our wee podcast has been shortlisted for Scots Project of the Year at this year's Scots Language Awards, and, and if you like what we do, Please guess who we vote. Right, straight into the story. Wished. Shug the Dug loved to sing. A woo 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 woo! Loved to sing more than anything. A woo 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 woo! He'd sing in the cludgy and he'd sing on the stairs. He'd sing to the budgie. He'd sing anywhere. A woo 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 woo! He'd sing when he was canty and he'd sing when he was sad. And his family loved him, even when he was bad. Ye nicked when the moon was bricked and foo, Shug sang out his lewdest, A woo 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 woo! He closed his eam and hurried up his head. Ah, oh, Shug, shouted his family, Can you no hod your wished? His family loved him, but they couldn't get rest, so they put Shug in the garden, thinking it best. Maybe he'd get distracted and play with his toys. Maybe that would stop Shug from mucking that noise. Shug had no idea he was doing their dingers. Because Shug thought he was a fantouche singer. A woo 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 woo! In the garden, Hutchin was snaffling at the grun. Looking for tasty treats like slaters and worm. Shug says to Hutchin, I'll be chucked to hard my wished, but I've no got you. Hutchin shrugs and says, Well, I've only got a snuffler and jaggies on my skin. Oh. Up in the air, Willet was fleeing by. Ooh, whoop, whoop, whoop. There's a wise bird, thought Shug. She'll tell me I'm sure. Shug says to Hullet, I'll be tell to hod my wish, but I've no gotchin. Hullet thinks and says, I've only got a twit twoo and bonny feathers on my skin. Twit twoo, twit twoo. Shug sighs to his cell, and then he finds puddock in a puddle. Ribbit, ribbit. She was enjoying a moothy of midges and enjoying a guddle. Shug says to Puddock, I'll be tell to hod my wished, but I've no gotchin. Puddock gulps Lump. and says, Oh, I've only got a rabbit and shiny green skin. Rabbit, rip. Oh, Shug sighs and smiles. The moon was foo and bricked. Shug held up his head and sang a woo 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 into the net. A bedroom window flew open and the next door's hoose and the old wifey that stayed there shouted, Shug, will you shush? 
Hi folks, I'm Ali McClure, I'm the other half of Uwe Podcast, alongside my pal Susie that you've just seen. The podcast was a project that we started in lockdown to keep our hands in with storytelling and songs and things when we couldn't go out and see a live audience. And we came up with the notion of putting together a half hour episode of stories and sayings and poems and nonsense, mostly in Scots, as a kind of a new resource for youngsters who are learning the language or learning that they're allowed to use the language that they already can. So... My favourite part of every episode is when Susie challenges me to write a new song around a particular Scots word. We've called this the Scottify Challenge, with apologies to Iona Fife and all the hard work she did getting Scots recognised by Spotify. But uh, I really enjoy coming up with a new song every single month. And I'm going to sing you two of those now just for your amusement. It's not terribly highbrow, I'm afraid, but I hope you'll not mind. And the first one was a song uh, based around a word that was voted for by our public on our Facebook group, Uri Podcast Facebook group. And they seem a very sensible bunch because the word they wanted a song about was the word bahuki. There is a laddie, he's the image of his daddy, and his name is Kenny Kenneth Tall. He will correct you in the minute that he's met you, he's a bit to you, I heap the ball. He thinks he's better than the wisest old professors He'll beat them we as common sense A peery wig maleery gets his facts or taps so teary But he blurts the nick with confidence And he talks with his bahooky, 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 bahooky His bahooky, 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 bahooky He'll a fact and he will make it into something really clicky With the proudest smile you've ever seen he thinks he's canny, teaching sucking next to granny, well his granny only rolls her in. There's nought to do, you see, we canny will pursue ye, and he'll ask you if you want to bet. He wants to shout about his facts and never doubt them, cause he found them on the internet, where they talk of their bahooky, 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 their bahooky. Granted, be so sure to feel your facts are true and pure. But if ye never pause to wonder, what a scunner you will talk at your bahooky, 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 your bahooky. Sincere apologies if that becomes an earworm for you. The second song I'm going to sing you is a similarly serious piece of work, and this was for the word Fusti. Life's a big fruit salad, that's what the teacher says. Each of us contribute in a dozen different ways. Some of us are sweeter and some of us are sour. But there's a place for Abadea that you may be sure. Now Jeannie says the teacher, I'd say that she's a peach. She's kind and warm and fuzzy and a pleasure for to teach. Barry is bananas, I think we'd all agree. There's Janet, pomegranate, and that's when she looks at me. New Sunny says the teacher, then I sit and roll your in. I'm sure you are the sweetest fruit that we have ever seen. A he drum high, a he drum ho, you'll know what me I'll have you know. The slightest bite would gar you poke, and the fusty cherry at the bottom of the poke. A he drum high, a ho drum he, there's no room in your bowl for me. The hail idea gangs up in smoke with the fusty cherry at the bottom of the poke. Hey! Happy, pretend she has nae heard. She keeks her in the class as if I have nae said a word. Laura is a lime, she says. She's sharp and she is bright. And Django is a mango who will whet your appetite. Mm, Grace is Grace and Claire's a pear. I think you will agree. And jolly little Molly is a shiny strawberry. 
Oh, what a lovely bunch we are with each a special place. You'll know me saying that, says I, can you stuff me in your face? I hate drum ho, I ho drum hay, no cherry red, but fuzzy grey, I'm no as nice as other folk. I'm the fusty cherry at the bottom of the poke. I hate drum high, I ho drum who, I will not taste my best for you. Fruit salad is a nasty joke with a fusty cherry at the bottom of the poke. Feeling half a clever, her story she can keep. I've thrown a spanner in her works, her gas is at a peep. But teacher, she's still smiling, she stands and sings to me. The foostiest of cherries grows a bonny cherry tree. A hedrum high, a hedrum ho, we're here and we will watch you grow. Deep down you are a lovely bloke, the foosty cherry at the bottom of the poke. A hedrum high, a hodrum hay, we can you blossom any day. Just see the beauty that you won't be the foosty cherry at the bottom. At the bottom of the poke. Thanks, folks.